Well, hello everybody. Welcome back or welcome if you're new to my channel. Today, I'm going to address a question I've been asked time and time again over these last few months. Why Bulgaria? Well, it seems an obvious question because Bulgaria is not the first choice of country anybody would ever think of. So let's get into it because the story of how I came to buy this house and how I decided to relocate permanently to Bulgaria is quite unusual and quite an interesting one. So it all started in 2019 when my ex-husband Sean and I decided to look for property in Ireland. Now as a background Brexit had just happened in the UK. I am a German with a German passport and suddenly I was finding myself in the position of having to apply for a long-term visa called settled status. And the authorities didn't make it easy. In fact, for a long time it looked very much like I was going to be declined my right to stay in the UK after almost 30 years. So, as a plan B, we decided to look for property in Ireland because Ireland has a similar culture to the UK. They speak English there. It is very much familiar. It's still Celtic culture and it is in the European Union. So there we went looking on eBay for a fixer upper because there are lots of properties in Ireland as well, old farms, that need doing up that are available for a reasonable price. And one day, Sean went to look for property typed in Ireland and the picture of this house came up. Now, I have no idea why the eBay algorithm thinks that when you look, in, when you look for a place in Ireland, you would be interested in a place in Bulgaria, but when we both saw the picture, it looked absolutely stunning. And I said to my husband, you know what? I love this house. I love the look about it. I love everything about it. The rural location, the fact it has 2,000 square meters of land, the outhouses, the way it's old fashioned. I just loved every single thing about it. And I said to him, if it doesn't go for too much, why don't we just get it as a holiday place? And at the time, the property was standing at £300. We were aware, of course, that it's not going to stay like that. But we decided to keep an eye on it. And uh, it didn't go up much further. We carried on looking. And we'd sort of already made up our minds, even though neither of us knew anything whatsoever about Bulgaria. We decided it's a nice place for a holiday. And even if for the price the house was a ruin, it would be just gorgeous to have all this land. We could always put a caravan on it. So we carried on looking. It went up to 850. And then one day it had shot up to about 5,000 euros. And that was more than we were willing to pay at the time, so we left it. Then, a day or so before the auction ran out, my ex got an email saying, well, you, uh, the auction is coming to an end. So he decided to just have another look, out of curiosity, how much it was going for. It turns out the high bidder had dropped out and the thing was back to 850 euros. So there we were in again with a chance. So we decided to go for it. We had made some inquiries about the estate agent. They seemed to be kosher because they had a track record on the internet of over 10 years with 99% favorable uh, feedback so we said, these people must be all right. We also made some inquiries and found out that 
it's not actually that easy anymore in Bulgaria for an estate agent to con people because when you buy property, it needs to actually be approved by a court. So when you buy a house here, you go first to a notary to draw up all the paperwork. You have to have an, an interpreter and translator who is certified. And the deeds have to be approved by your local court, which checks that the deeds are actually honest and the house exists. So very little risk from a legal point of view, actually. You're very much protected in the system. So with all that knowledge, we decided to go for it. My husband went that night and bid, and we were the high bidder, and we won. And we got this place for the amazing price of three and a half thousand euros. We couldn't believe our luck, and it was really exciting. I must admit that was one of the most nerve-wracking nights of my life, actually bidding off for a property on eBay. I had palpitations, and I think my ex wasn't much different. But... We got in touch with the estate agent, everything got arranged, and at the time we had trouble finding a dog sitter for our dog. So considering we found out that under Bulgarian law, no matter who buys the property, both marital partners own it anyway, no matter what it says on paper, we decided that I should go and see to all the formalities. So I booked my plane and the estate agent arranged a hotel, everything was done and I got got to uh, Bulgaria. I didn't know a single word of Bulgarian to be honest. I knew nothing whatsoever about the country apart from the few videos that we found on YouTube about its history. And I got to Bulgaria and the very first thing I realized, oh my god, they have a different alphabet, I can't read anything. So here went my plans of using my linguistic knowledge as a translator to model my way through because I couldn't read a thing. Okay, I somehow managed to grab a taxi to take me from the airport to the main tra train station in Sofia because the plan was that I should come by train. In the main train station, Nobody spoke a single word of English, but when I went to reception and I just kept insisting on ticket, then I tried my French billet, that seemed to work, and I found out afterwards they actually used the French word billet for for train ticket, and kept repeating the word vratza, that worked. I got my ticket, I somehow figured out the correct train and got on, and uh, that was my very first throwback in time because I realized they had actually bought up the old 1980s Deutsche Bahn rolling stock. So there I was, thrown back into my teenage years, sitting on the Deutsche Bahn train, making my way to Bratza, which is a very scenic, very pretty train journey. It was the beginning of March, so... Things were starting, to, just about starting to bloom, and the trees were starting to go green. It was magical. I got to Vratza, got to my hotel. The estate agent actually picked me up from the train station and sorted everything. Brilliant. Then, once we had gone through all the formalities and bought the house, the estate agent said to me, do you actually want to see your house? <laughs> I hadn't seen a thing up to now. I bought a house I'd only ever seen in pictures. So the estate agent gave me a lift to my village, dropped me off and said, look, I've got some business to do in the neighboring town. I'll pick you up in four hours. You familiarize yourself with what you've just bought. So I was here. I brought some lunch and uh, I looked around and I was expecting it to be a bit creepy because, you know, the house had been empty for many years and, um, yeah, you know, old houses tend to be a little bit spooky so I thought, mm, when, what may I find when I look for all the places? Because 
you know, that's what old places are like. But I started to look around and I wasn't spooked at all. It was strange. It was feeling almost familiar. I decided to look in the semi-basement first. And even though it was completely full with cobwebs, cobwebs and the very first thing I stared straight in my face was a huge spider when I opened the door, I still didn't feel put out at all. I didn't feel scared all by myself. The whole place had a very homely feeling. It almost felt like when I opened the door, the house was welcoming me. Very strange thing. I can't explain it, but that was just the feeling I got. So I had a look around. The place was full of the original belongings and furniture. Then I went upstairs and the same. And after I had a good look around, I decided to have lunch. I grabbed one of the old chairs and sat in the garden. And at the beginning of March, it was already like 25 degrees Celsius. So I was just sunbathing, sitting here, completely in awe of what I just bought, realizing that all this beauty, all this nature is now mine. And I couldn't believe my luck, really. So I was just sitting here, thanking the universe for all of this, you know, in deep gratitude, meditating a little bit, possibly even dozing off a tiny bit at 25 degrees, when I heard footsteps in the house. Now I thought, oh, there might be a back door, maybe a neighbor has come in, because after all, they could have a caretaker. I don't know. I haven't explored the grounds like that. So I went and looked inside the house, and there was nothing. I thought, strange. But then I was sitting down, carrying on my lunch, and I heard shuffling again. So I turned around, and at the top window, in fact, this window behind here, I saw an old Bulgarian lady in full get-up, the old cardigan, headscarf, everything like, like you expect from the movies. I thought, oh, a caretaker is in here after all. So I went upstairs again, nothing. The house was totally deserted. But I kept getting this welcoming feeling. And then it dawned on me in the depth of my soul that the house had just welcomed me. The resident of the house just welcomed me. And when I carried on looking through some of the old belongings I found that day, I found a picture and the old lady was definitely in the picture, just younger, in her 40s. And I realized this must be the lady of the house. So, yeah, that day I was actually welcomed into my home by a ghost, not to put a finer point on it. Now, I know that sounds controversial, but myself, I do believe in ghosts. I believe in the afterlife, so I had no problem accepting this. And then to reconfirm this, about a year later, when my ex and I both came together, Sean was working in the garden one day. It was a very quiet day, no wind at all, sunny, when suddenly a piece of paper blew at his feet. Now, we both don't know where this wind should have come from that blew a piece of paper at his feet in the middle of the garden, nowhere near the house. But he picked it up and brought it in, and it was an anniversary notice, the first anniversary of the death day of a lady. This is quite common. They put these notices up in the villages, 
So we didn't think that much of it, but we wondered where it came from. Because the piece of paper looked pristine, like it had never seen a single day outside. So it could have not been nailed up like these notices usually are. It was not destroyed by the weather. But when I looked at the picture more closely, I suddenly realized this was the lady who had welcomed me the year before. Same headscarf, same cardigan, same face. I recognized her. Maria Chonchova. So the lady of the house had introduced herself and in a way welcomed my ex as well. That made it very special and I've kept this death notice to this day. And to me that was the final sign that the house had actually called out to us. I mean there were just too many coincidences to make it a coincidence anymore. You look for property in Ireland, the search brings up a property in Bulgaria. Everything works out just fine. The estate agent is kosher. Everything was so smooth. The whole process was so easy that it just had had to be. It was meant to be. Yeah, and this is how I've ended up owning a property in Bulgaria. So then I had the idea of making this into a retreat center. The idea came pretty much straight away. But then life happened. The big C happened for everybody. And the world just went crazy. So all my plans were laid on ice for a couple of years. Then I came back two years ago and things were already not that great with my ex. And uh, he had decided in the meantime that he doesn't like it here. So I had a problem. I wanted to create a retreat center. He wasn't interested. So there was a bit of friction. I ended up not going. Then last year I was meant to go for six months by myself to start the retreat center. And life blew up. Mum died. Two days after mum died, my ex left me. So, yeah, there was no chance at all last year to come here. But then by September, I had decided that I no longer wanted to live in my marital home in the UK because it was just too many painful memories. And also I found that after everything blew up with my ex, there were no friends left. All the people I had thought were friends very, very quickly disappeared. And suddenly when I needed help, there was nobody. For almost eight months, I just sat in my house in England and stared at the bare walls talking to myself. My best friends were in the USA and Europe. So I literally, the only, the only contact with the outside world I had was via Zoom and I was getting depressed, etc. I've mentioned the story a few times already in previous videos. So I made the decision to uproot and come here because here I have several friends. I've got a good network of friends, of good people. And since coming here, it's been the right choice. I have had help from everybody. I can go visit. I can socialize. I have a life back. And I'm going to start an eco community where several people will live on this land homesteading. There's already some interest in that. So it looks very much like my dream is going to come to fruition. So definitely it was the right choice to come here. But this is the story of why Bulgaria. So I hope that has answered some of your questions. And as always, 
if you have questions, put them in the comments for me. I'm always happy to answer. In fact, if you are somewhere here in Bulgaria and you want to meet up, drop me a question, uh, a comment, and we can always arrange to meet somewhere for a cup of coffee. I love meeting new people. And if you enjoy this video, please subscribe to my channel, like, and pass it on to your friends because it helps enormously with the algorithms. My little community is growing all the time and YouTube is already recognizing it. The algorithms are doing really well. So thank you everybody who's already subscribed and who's helping with that by being active and commenting. I really appreciate that. And for now, just enjoy a nice cup of coffee. And know that whatever life throws at you, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. I think that's my main message here. Never give up hope, no matter how bad your situation. There will be better days ahead. Blessed be.